This is you at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> what time did you get up? Like, what, when did your day start and how do you regulate whatever chemicals are going through your body to keep you functioning at the uh, expected level of freneticism? I have to, uh, well, so I, I, sleep is never enough for me. And this is a, a thing that drives me cra cra crazy. Is that, it, why is it that it's hard? <laughs> this is so stupid. Why is it so hard? Uh, Wait, what, what was I going to say? Why is it so hard to fall asleep at night, but you can't get out of bed in the morning? It's like, wouldn't it be great if you could reverse that? <laughs> that like, like, that like when you're like, I'm in bed. Oh, this is the best. This is the best. And then when you wake up, I hate sleep. I hate sleep. I'm getting up. But we have it reversed where it's like you lie in bed. You have all these thoughts in your head that are percolating and stuff. And you try to figure out ways to do it, melatonin, whatever. And you're, you lie. And then in bed, you're in bed. You're going like, this is the greatest feeling ever, ever, ever. And the alarm goes off and you can't get out of bed. I have a, I have a, I'm at war with myself every morning. I set my alarm for 8, 8.15. I have a little dog now. And he's like, has Gus. to pee. Gus, he's amazing. That kind of like adds to the stress, but it gets me out of bed. As In terms of drugs, coffee is the best thing to, I mean, it, it <laughs> runs the world. I have a cup of coffee. Immediately, you got to run to the bathroom. And then that, the, going to the bathroom, then just turns on all the positive switches. I don't know what it is with the, uh, I, I can't remember the system that uh, uh, there's like two two systems in the human body that are that are uh, 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 affected by behavior. I can't think of the name of it, but anyway, so you there's refer here to the GI tract, I believe. Maybe it's a GI. Well, first GI tract, then the central nervous system, and then all of a sudden it's like, holy crap, I'm alive, and so that's what I do. And then um, and then I'll write, you know, uh, pick stories between. Mm -hmm. Nine and nine thirty. I used to write all my monologues. I can't do that anymore. So now it's just I let that slide. And then at eleven eight. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, man. Wait. How hard was that to let go? It's still I'm hard. A freak. It's still I, hard. I don't know. No how one I, does it as good as you. That's you in your brain, and it's funny because they're trying to do you, and you just and you need them. You need them, but you can't. You're so unforgiving because you're going like ah, no. That's that's no, two on the no, nose. No, that's a that's it's, I don't need another Biden joke. I would never say that. Man, I because I make poop that. jokes, it's like everything's a poop joke, everything's a view yeah. joke, and it's like, but I can't blame them because that's if I had done the view joke, I'd be going, oh, this is really good. <laughs> but then, very good. Yeah. terribly clever. But then the writer terribly Joe clever. does it, and I go, oh my god, that's so hacky. I'm gonna change that to Nancy Pelosi because that's more original. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the sleep thing. What you need to do is you need to flip it. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, sleep needs a flip. Yes. And if you haven't read the book, and look, I'll fillet it properly before the <laughs> dust settles. I here. like how you use that as a it's, verb. <laughs> well, you know what? When in doubt. Yes. We, we need, we're, we're short on verbs mm -hmm. these days. We're long on nouns. We're very, very long except on for the adjectives. Except for the verb weaponize and normalize. <laughs> I hate both of them. We're normalizing Trump and we're weaponizing democracy. I, I hate those verbs. <laughs> Hate them. So flip them. Yes. You're, you're like, like the light motif in this excellent book called The King of Late Night by Greg Gutfeld, aside from the unbelievable cover. Isn't that the best? Discussed, <laughs> dude, on, on, honestly, it's worth lingering for it. I mean, that's you with uh, some very, Big. some very generous. Yes. Well, um, they had to dial it, it back, is, Mike. Mike. They had to dial it back. I'm too muscular. And I told them to uh, soften it a bit because that's not my, my, I mean, look at this. I mean, come on, buddy. Look at that, huh? Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Hard as Chinese math. Yes, exactly. That's racist. It might be. <laughs> Sorry. Should have um, said Asian math. I don't know. Whose idea was it? I mean, look, I get, I get the shredded King of the Hill thing. It's all great. But to have... To have Kim, is that Kimmel or I had who's, who's grasping at your innermost thoughts? There's Fallon, Fallon yeah. there's Kimmel, there's Brian Williams, there's there's I there was one person on there I had to take off, but I I don't think I can say who it is. Uh, but if you were watching CNN Plus, <laughs> you might be able to guess who it is. But I had to take it off. Did did anyone watch CNN Plus? No. I, I, oh oh yes. I, 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 I know exactly. Yeah, yeah. Fox alumni. Um, yes. 
<laughs> but what? it's so good. It's like, I was like, I, I don't, originally, I'm trying to think of what they were. The, I had the original concept of the, you know, the, the comedy tragedy mask mm -hmm. that you always sure. see. I was going to be in the middle Sad of it. Sad clown, happy clown. Yeah, I was going to be yeah. in the middle of it. And it was called The Flip. And then I go, like, this is, like, the flip is the concept of the book, which is how left is right, right is left, and now we're the cool kids, they're the not cool kids. I'm sure it's going to flip back at some point, but right now we got it. It took us 20 years to get there, and it's great. But that was, but then I thought, like, I kept hearing King of Late Night, and I thought, oh, just push it, push it to its limit. Just, like, embrace it. I took that idea from watching Jesse's book, How I Save the World or something, or Jesse yeah. Waters Saves the yeah. World. And it was so uh -huh. audacious. And I go like, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. So I, I basically, if anybody could learn from Jesse, no one has. <laughs> I have. Like learning from Jesse is impossible. It's like getting blood from a rock. Here we go. I got the book right here. They just gave me the book. But yeah, so it's like, um, and then I got Gus, Gus, and I got a unicorn. Mm -hmm. Um, of course. I got, like, like James Corden. Remember him? Sure. Oh, sure. You got, oh, you got little Brian Stelter. You got, um, what's his name from The Daily Tre Show? Uh, I can't Trevor think of Trevor Noah. Yeah. Trevor Noah? Yeah. And oh, yeah, look at him. You got him hanging on for dear life. Yeah, and He's Brian Williams in the, the back bottom. there. So a lot of these people were like, I vanquished. Well, I, don't, I shouldn't say I, but yes, I. Uh, what's no, the significance yeah. of the goldfish? Hold on, hold on. Oh! Oh, you had Excellent. a pet goldfish, right? Excellent point. They needed to do a segment on pets, and I didn't have any. <laughs> so uh, everybody has a pet. So we went and got a goldfish, and uh, it's not really goldfish. It's something else. It's like Tyrus knows the name of it. It's a special kind of fish. But anyway, I named it um, Abe, <laughs> and nobody gets it because it's Abe Vigoda yes. fish from Barney Miller. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Nobody very, very gets it. So that fish is, is now in my office. He's got the best big eyes and he just swims around and around. And <laughs> nobody pays attention to him. And I loved him, loved him until I got Gus. And now I don't even look at him. <laughs> because we have, these, Dude, we'll we, have these we have these different levels of consciousness. And we, yeah. we reward the ones that are closer to our consciousness than a way. And so we, you know, we don't like rocks. <laughs> but yeah. we like, yeah. you know, if that's how we work. Well, look, I don't want to bury the lead. This is a, I mean, here's the difference between you and Jesse. Jesse Waters didn't, didn't really save the world. No, he didn't right? really write if the anything, book, he made probably, it, right? He made it worse. He made the world worse. <laughs> Whatever he did, you know, it's a big swing and it might be just a touch hyperbolic. You actually, I mean, you actually did it. You you beat these guys. It, right? You know, it was and funny. I, I I mean, I I won't I I will kind of agree in the sense that 20 years ago I wrote this piece called the Dean Wormer effect, and I was saying, and I probably talked about this with you. Was, zero was, point zero. Yeah, it was the fact that in every movie. Uh, in any pop culture reference, the Republican is the bad guy, and the fun people, the liberals, are going to be Animal House. And that's the way it always is in every movie. Oh, so, and, I, and I wrote this piece for the Huffington Post, of all places. And I thought, like, at, we have, if we can switch that, we win. It's the only way we're going to win, because as Breitbart said, politics is downstream from culture. And you're seeing that now. And you're, and you're, so the late, my show was the flip. It was like, I'm going to, like, it started with Red Eye and then The Five, and this show was like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do, because the thing is, they're my, I mean, left wing humor and that, and comedy is kind of like where I came from, except I'm not a left winger. And I understand how they do it, I, I, I'm naturally kind of that way. And it's like, it's time that I like make the Republicans like me, be more like me. Like I say in my book, I, I say that I didn't become a Republican to become more like a Republican. I did it so they would become more like me. They needed me more than I needed them. And I always felt that way, you know, with Fox, they needed somebody to pull them out of mm. the Dean Wormer effect and get them over here. Don't be the people that are always outraged. Like, it's funny, it's like, it's amazing how somebody can find a new outrage every day and say, I've never been more outraged in my life. And then the next day, they do it again. It's like when William Devane says, now has been, never been a better time to buy gold. But then he mm -hmm. says it a week later. 
It's like, when is yeah. it? But it's like, so it, 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 it's so with outrage, it's always been, it's always <laughs> been like, you know, I'm now more outraged than ever. It's like, no, there's not enough outrage. So it's like, it's, it's like, you got to take, here's your outrage. Now go over that and see what's funny. And, and right. that's, and that's what you do. And now the left is in that seat where they're always outraged and they forgot their funny bone. So it's like, now on the late, it's why I beat all the late night shows was because they stopped being funny. They were more like looking at people like me, or I would say more, not me, but more like Trump because Trump's having a good time yeah. that he's bad and Fox news is bad and that you have to get the, you have to get the shot. They, I mean, Colbert did an entire musical thing based on getting the injection. Q-tips. Yeah. 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 Insane. Oh, the oh. Q-tip, the Cuomo Q-tip. That does not oh. age well. Oh. Much like him. No. <laughs> no, it didn't. Do you know that Chris Cuomo no, called didn't. me a little troll the other day? I was like very touched little, by little that. Little person. Little person. Yeah, he called me a little person. He wanted to say midget, but he knew the M word wouldn't stand with the woke. On his show, he yeah, did? Yeah, it was, no, I don't he know, was it was talking about O'Reilly, 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 yeah. O'Reilly, mm-hmm. yeah. And O'Reilly said, uh, well, Gutfeld, he's moderately entertaining. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, Cuomo goes, no, he's just, a, he's just a vile, I think, no, what did he say? A vile little I, I remember he said little person. That, that, was the, yes. that was the last bit of it. But yeah, he's just rancid or so, just, uh, it, it was, was something so, pejorative for sure. The look, on his, the look on his face was that he meant it. Like, he really did mean it. It was like I had upset him. But all I did was quote him. You know, he was the guy <laughs> during, during the, the explosion in crime just was like, right, yeah, there's no crime. And him and Don Lemon talking about going to dinner. Hey, we went out to dinner and we had a nice dinner. And uh, there's, it's all these right-wing people talking about crime. But we had a nice dinner. People said, thank you. And it was like, that's bullshit. That never happened. No, it's like, and, and, and if they had actually admitted, we'd be in a different place. But the narratives were being shaped for our minds, not to believe it. You know, we, you're talking about the flip. It, it, it's so interesting. I spent, I had a show on CNN for two years. I got a show on Fox Business now. I think, I think I'm one of the few people who gets invited on both channels sometime in the same week it's your like voice it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's your voice well, and your rug and your rugged good looks yes right let's get <laughs> and, and 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 your my your amazing ability to boil down the problems of society that's what you do in to, words to that distill pe- them in a way that the every man could actually not only comprehend but share yes later you are over you know what you are something other than a bud light you are today's Thomas Jefferson. I hope that's not <laughs> overstating it. Maybe understating it. Maybe George Jefferson. You are today's you George go. Jefferson. Thomas George Jefferson. Yes. We're, you moved on up. We're moving on You're up. You're moving on up. What a great message. I don't think you could do that show now because you can't talk about Couldn't success. You cannot talk about success. It's like that, what he's doing is he's playing, he's with playing within the system you can't do that. Achievement, success is still part of this systemically racist system. Aside from CNN and Fox supposedly being, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum, what I saw in both places and what I still see is a version of the flip that you're talking about. There was a time when each thought that they were more firmly established, more credible, more trusting, whatever it was. But but more to the point, each network really seemed to understand its audience. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know what's, what's really happening now, and I don't want to go in a place that's uncomfortable for you to talk about, but, but like I, I talked about this at Freedom Fest when they coughed up literally hundreds of dollars for me to address the crowd. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and it's like this whole Bud Light thing, it's pretty interesting, but fundamentally, it's a story about a company and a CEO that kind of lost touch with its core customer. And, you know, recently I've talked to a lot of Fox viewers who are like, I don't, I'm not sure I understand what's going on at that network right now. And CNN viewers are saying the same thing, you know, what? Why did we fill a room full of Trump supporters and give him a microphone? Right. They want to know. Right. It, and so, like, everything is flipping, but 
not just macro, but micro. Yes. And internally. Mm-hmm. Nice plug. I, I will I, say I, something smart. Yo, no, I have to. I, um, I think that a large part of the flip is due to Tucker. Tucker started yeah. having people on his show that I never would have had. And then I had to revisit my own beliefs. Say, uh, when I was on the Huffington Post 20 years ago, I would sit there and I would, I would just rip on Glenn Greenwald. Like, I could not stand yeah. him. Was I wrong? Maybe. Was he wrong back then? He might have been. But the thing is, we are now in the same place. And I think, like, having, uh, when, he, when Tucker started having Glenn Greenwald on the show, I think that was like a, for me anyway, it forced me to look at myself and go like, okay, have I been, like, did I write people off who I just didn't understand? Uh, or um, I was just simplistic because of the team sport. Like, ah, he's not on my oh. team. He's not on my team. Right. So what happened was what Tucker did, which was like, no, I don't think any other talk show host did, was invite people that previously were not on your team and find out where you could meet. And that's what we all should be doing. And it's like, so then you end up seeing Glenn Greenwald, Matt Taibbi. I used to make fun of Matt, Matt Taibbi. I don't anymore because I realized, you know what? Maybe I was being simplistic about what I was making fun of. And um, Bill Maher. Bill Maher. I did, his, I did Bill Maher's uh, show. And he, I, I know for a fact he didn't want me on because of things that I've said about him. And that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And, and, uh, and so I sent a nice note beforehand saying, hey, look, you know, I, uh, you know, that's just bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And we had a great time. And a lot of it is on their side in the sense that where they were, whatever their team was, has moved all the way over mm -hmm. here. So they're kind of alone. And then I'm like, I'm, I, come over here. I'll talk to you. And we still like have, I mean, I'd be, uh, uh, you know, Bill Maher still has intense animus towards Trump, but we didn't even talk about that because, you know, whatever. Like, a, a good example is RFK Jr. You know, I'm strongly critical, I was strongly critical of the anti-vax uh, movement in the early 2000s simply because I didn't see the science there, and I still think that the science isn't there on, but I understand they're coming from a correlation. They're, like, looking at these uh, a multiple of vaccines and the rise of autism. And I'm, I, re I mean, I came from a health magazine background. It wasn't that simple. It, it, it wasn't that yeah. simple. These are, when the, these are when those illnesses develop, happen to be at the same time that you get these vaccines. However, I don't know. And I, but I was very, ad I was like, I basically said they had blood on their hands. And I, I think there is evidence in terms of the anti-vax movement and the rise of measles, you know. So I think that there was a, there is a reason to be critical of them. However, COVID taught us that the science, the science isn't clear on any of this stuff, and and they may not have had all the science ready when they were doing a lot of these vaccines. So I have to, and so then I'm like listening, I'm starting to listen to. RFK Jr. and I'm going, okay, uh, he has some nutty ideas, bad ideas, but then I'm listening to him and I go, no, he's putting them out. He's going like, he's a reader. He's like a latchkey kid. He just spent all of his time reading stuff, which is weird because he was very good looking as a kid. What were you doing reading books? But he had like all this, he just like, he'll talk about anything. And that's too, in a, in a weird way, RFK is a, a Democrat parallel to Trump. Trump will posit anything that comes in and said, hey, you know, uh, light, light could be used. Maybe light could be used in the, in, the, in the lungs or whatever. People said, oh, my God, shooting, what did they say, like shooting bleach in the veins. Right. It turned into something yeah. else. So that's Very, what happens. If you, if you are open and curious and you say something, that will always end up being twisted into something else. But there's a difference. RFK Jr., his deeds – are different than his word. I mean, it's like he, he's talking about ideas, but he's not doing bad things. And it was the same thing with Trump. Like, Trump was a good president. I think he was, you know? Here's what got flipped. Um, did you listen to RFK on Rogan by any chance? Or, or, or at least 
passingly familiar with that yes. three hour thing? Yeah. So I think I, li- okay. I think I listened to half of it. And then like with every, yeah. do you notice this when you go on Spotify, all of your Rogan stuff, you can see where it stopped. Yeah. It's like, I never yeah. get to the end, but I still get to it where I fa- finally fall asleep. <laughs> Double speed. Yes, double, double speed. speed With RFK, you right? need doubles. Oh, God, what does that sound like, you, a double speed? It's, I tell you what. Pepe man, the Frog. Part Muppet, part <laughs> yes, Rubble. Yeah, yes. it's, it's very, very, very hard to... But, um, no, I, I was really interested in what I heard, and I knew there'd be some pushback, and I was glad the pushback came. Nick Gillespie over at Reason did a great interview yes. with him as well. And then I heard Sam Harris. Oh, my God. Talk. Okay. Oh. So, so Sam... So Sam <laughs> oh God, this is so. By the way, Dave Rubin, on your earlier point too, you know, guys who really took chances, guys who spoke truth at an inconvenient time for them, all that stuff is all kind of coming in together. I think right now in a way that informs all of this stuff. But you know, Sam Harris has made a lot of sense uh, over the years with a podcast called Making Sense. I loved it. In the wake of... I loved I, it. He was the guy He was the guy that got me into listening to podcasts because I read his book. Uh, I don't, it was a book that, where he talked about meditation. Maybe it was called Making Sense. Or it's the name of... I think it was. It's the name of the new podcast, Waking Up. The book was called Waking, Waking Up. Up. And I started listening to Making Sense uh, early on and... It was tremendous, but then the Trump thing broke him, and he got it, broke it. it got too invested in what was going on in the in the world of social media, and he was like that. Guy. He kept saying, "I'm not, I'm not going to look at Twitter anymore. I'm off Twitter." But then he would come back, and it would just it would just fill him. But by the way, I was like that in 2015. I was like completely uh, subsumed by this, like what's going on out there, and how am I losing my audience because I'm saying this? And then you realize it's not, it's nothing. You just have to. He yeah. had to let go, but he can't let go. You know what he said? That, uh, can I, I know I'm, I, I went off. And, he, I listened to his last uh, Making Sense, I don't know, maybe it was like three weeks ago or something. And he was saying mm-hmm. that he, how depressed he got listening to something. And maybe it was RFK Jr. And I'm going like, why are you depressed? 